Hey friends, welcome back to the channel to Tech Club, the ongoing series where I review tech and apps and other products that have the potential to add value to both of our lives, yours and mine. And this episode is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna talk you through 27, yes, 27 apps that have shaped the course of my life from the age of 11 through to the age of about 28. And for each of these apps, I'm gonna share the way that it's influenced my life so that hopefully you can get some ideas for how you might want to apply these apps or similar apps to your own life as well. As always, there's gonna be timestamps down below, so do feel free to skip around if you feel like it. And very excitingly, this video is very kindly sponsored by Adobe Creative Cloud, but I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. Let's move on to our first app. And app number one is in fact Notepad. I discovered the wonders of Notepad when I was around about 11 years old and Notepad was the first app <laughs> that I would say has shaped the course of my life because I learned how to code by using Notepad. I taught myself HTML and CSS using the internet, essentially. Back in the day, it was a website called W3 Schools. And I taught myself how to code, essentially making .html pages on Notepad and seeing how they would render in Internet Explorer. I think it was Internet Explorer 6 or Internet Explorer 5 at the time, the browser. And it was really through Notepad that I made my first website. And this bug that I had for creating websites was something that served me for such a long time. And even now, today, I still think it's really, really valuable for people to learn how to code. If you're watching this and you're interested in starting a side hustle or making money on the side or, or anything like that, learning how to code is a remarkably useful skill, not just the domain of software engineering, for example, you know, learning to code, learning how to make websites. And we've got a few more apps in the rest of this video. They're gonna be themed around this building websites thing. Building websites has opened up so many doors for my life, even when I was in medical school and beyond. And it's just a skill that I, yeah, just could not recommend highly enough. This brings us on nicely to app number two, which is Dreamweaver. Now at the time when I was using Dreamweaver, it was called Macromedia Dreamweaver. It's now called Adobe Dreamweaver. And it's the app that I first learned how to properly design and code websites on around the age of 12 or 13. And again, Dreamweaver really shaped the course of my life because it really leveled up my web design stuff. And it meant that from age 13 onwards, I was A, building my own website projects as side hustles when I was in school. And B, I was also masquerading as a sort of freelance web developer on the internet and offering my services to small businesses and making sort of five, $10 here and there because I was coding stuff using Notepad and using Dreamweaver and building websites for people. And that was a way for me to make money on the internet. And again, that bug of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurialism that I got through making my first several dollars on the internet, again, served me for the rest of my life and will probably continue to do so. And I put a lot of my, I guess, business and YouTube channel and like life success in inverted commas down to this streak of entrepreneurialism that I got. And I have to thank Notepad and Dreamweaver in particular for kind of introducing me to the world of web development. And related to web development is web design, which I first learned on Photoshop. Yes, Photoshop CS2, Creative Suite 2. Again, back when I was like 13 years old, because initially I was right, kind of writing HTML and CSS code on Notepad and through Dreamweaver. But then I realized, oh, I want to make logos and I want to make fancy banners and I want to make like forum signatures. And so I managed to get hold of a copy of Adobe Photoshop CS2 at the time and taught myself how to use Photoshop and to do this kind of web design stuff. And so so now when I was making money on the internet and doing my own personal project, it wasn't just development that I was doing, it was also web design. Again, this is an app that has shaped my life because the skill of designing websites and designing graphics was a skill that I, I then used throughout my school years up until 18. I used it throughout medical school to design brochures and flyers for university societies. I used it to design medical technology apps, which got me hired as a freelance app and user interface designer while I was in med school, which helped me make about a hundred pounds an hour. That was the rate that I was charging back in the day. And ultimately this love for design was the thing that made my YouTube channel, this YouTube channel look legit even five years ago when I was getting started out. And so I do owe a lot of my success to Photoshop and to the web, web and graphic design skills that it taught me. And even now I still use Photoshop for designing websites and for designing thumbnails and for kind of mocking up things for my YouTube channel and for the rest of the business. And that's one of the reasons why I'm delighted to say that this video is sponsored by Adobe. Adobe is an absolutely dream brand to work with because as I said, I've literally been using their stuff since, since the age of like 11. So the last 17 years of my life. Now, back in the day when you wanted to use things like Photoshop and Dreamweaver and like Lightroom and After Effects and Audition and all of the other tools in the Adobe Creative Suite, it was called Creative Suite back in the day, you had to buy each piece of software individually. But these days it's super easy because Adobe have this thing called Creative Cloud, which I have been a subscriber of since, I don't know, like 2015 or so. And very excitingly, they've got a ridiculously good deal if you're a student. Right now, I'm not a student, so I pay full price for Adobe Creative Cloud as does everyone else on our team because it comes with all of the different Adobe software for you know photography or video editing or graphic design or web design, basically like audio design. All of the things are all associated and included with Adobe Creative Cloud. But 
but if you're a student or a teacher, you can actually get 65% off the first year subscription. And so even if you're on a student budget, it makes it the absolutely perfect subscription to sign up for because it includes Photoshop and Dreamweaver and Lightroom and After Effects and Audition and like any other Adobe app that you can basically use to kickstart your passion project or your side hustle or help you with your academic stuff. You can really use the Adobe suite for absolutely anything. Anyway, if you want to try out any of the Adobe software, lots of which has changed and shaped my life personally, you can hit the link in the video description or scan this QR code that's going to be on screen and that will give you a free, completely free seven day trial to the Adobe Creative Cloud. And then you can subscribe after that if you would like to. So thank you so much Adobe for sponsoring this video and for creating these apps that have really helped shape my life. So app number four was in fact World of Warcraft, <laughs> uh, which I don't have a lot to say about otherwise, other than it shaped my life for three years where, where I was playing it for an average of three and a half hours each day. Through that, I became good friends with two of my school friends, Chris and Omar, and we're still friends to this day. And it's the game that helped me appreciate why gaming is so fun. Uh, sadly, I kind of lost touch with gaming a little bit over the last like 10 years since starting university, but it is something I want to dabble with more. I've got Elden Ring on the PS5 and want to have a go at that some point when I figure out how to make enough time in my day to actually play video games. App number five is in fact Kindle. And I first got a Kindle back in 2009 and I've been reading books on Kindle basically ever since then. And the reason I'm calling it an app is because, well, Kindle has an app now. Essentially, the great thing about that is that anytime I get any kind of recommendation for any kind of book, I can just buy it on Kindle basically immediately. It gets delivered to my device, my phone or my Kindle or my iPad or my Mac immediately. And I can just start reading it immediately. I've made tons of videos talking about how Kindle is just one of the most life-changing purchases or apps that I've ever used. So I'm not gonna wax too too much on about it. But if you have not yet started reading eBooks, really something I'd recommend. I do like reading physical books as well. It's kind of nice, but just the conveniences of an eBook just I think far outweigh the benefits of reading a physical book. Since I started using Kindle and because I use Kindle and read on the Kindle app on my iPad and my phone and my Kindle fairly regularly, it's just meant that I'm able to read somewhere between 50 and 100 books a year. Obviously, you know, just reading books for its own sake is not inherently useful, but I think over the last like 18 years of my life, I've absorbed so much really useful kind of information and content and learnings through the medium of books that if it hadn't been for the Kindle app, I don't think it would have been anywhere near as easy for me to do that as it was. So again, thank you Kindle for being a sick app. Definitely try out Kindle if you haven't already. App number six on our list isn't really an app, but I'm gonna call it an app because the word app sort of mm, app, website, tool, whatever. And it's in fact WordPress. Now WordPress is a kind of website builder and it powers, I think around 30% of the internet these days. But I started using WordPress when I was, I think around 14 or 15, when I was doing this freelance web development, graphic design type stuff, because loads of people's websites would be hosted on WordPress. And when people would want me to make a website for them, I would just generally buy a WordPress template off of ThemeForest and then I would just edit the template. And they would think, oh my God, this website is sick. How did you do that? And WordPress is great because it lets people actually edit edit the text of their own website without having to know how to code. So from about the age of 15 to about the age of 25, I was using WordPress at least every week, if not potentially every day. My whole first business, SixMed, was built on top of WordPress websites and WordPress themes, and I've just spent so much time working with WordPress. I don't really like it anymore. I prefer Ghost, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, but I have to say WordPress shaped the course of my life. And even to this day, WordPress powers 30% plus of the internet. And so if you're interested in potentially moonlighting or side hustling as a web designer or web developer, learning WordPress is actually a really, really, really useful skill that makes you highly employable and highly in demand from people who host their websites on WordPress, which as I said, is like 30% of the internet. Then we fast forward a little bit to starting medical school. So in 2012, I started my first year of medical school. And within a few months of medical school, I discovered a completely life-changing app called Anki. Anki is a completely free flashcard app available on all devices, Mac, Windows, phone, et cetera, et cetera. And it's great because it's flashcards in digital format and it's completely free. And so I used Anki extensively throughout my time in medical school. It made memorizing random ass facts that you have to do as a medical student so much easier because it's got this sort of spaced repetition algorithm built into it. Again, I've made a ton of videos on Anki in the past. I even have a Skillshare class on it. I'll pull that, put that down below and up there if you wanna check it out. Amazing app if you need to learn anything, if you have lots of stuff you need to memorize, if you're trying to learn a language, Anki is just absolutely sick for that kind of stuff. And next, another technique that I discovered which really helped me throughout medical school was in fact the Pomodoro technique, which you've probably heard of, Basically you work for 25 minutes, then you take a five minute break. And then you repeat this times four, and then you take a half an hour break. And the Pomodoro method was essentially how I would work with my friends in different libraries around Cambridge, where I went to university. Now there's kind of two ways that we would time ourselves when it came to the Pomodoro method. Firstly, we would use a website called Tomato Timer. I think that's what it was called, but it was just a random website. You can just Google the phrase Pomodoro Timer and will pop up a free website that lets you time that. But a few years into medical school, I discovered a really good app for the phone called Forest. And Forest is great because Forest is like basically a Pomodoro timer. You set a timer for 25 minutes, but in those 25 minutes, it sort of locks you out of your phone 
And if you try and go on your phone or get distracted by notifications, as you're working, it plants a tree and the tree grows. But if you go off that and you get distracted, then the tree dies. Again, it's just a little bit of fun. It's basically a glorified 25 minute tomato timer. But the fact that you're killing a tree, allegedly, when you to kind of get distracted meant that I was getting not distracted and it would kind of, you know, there's leaderboards and stuff and we'd kind of end up in a bit of a competition with our friends for who can do the most Pomodoros in a day. It's just a bit of friendly conversation, just a bit of fun, but I found that that app really helped me focus while I was studying for my exams in med school, which is why the Pomodoro technique is one of the apps broadly that has helped shape my life. Next up, we are continuing medical school and we are continuing the web development saga with three apps in particular that shaped my life while I was in med school. And that is firstly, Sublime Text. Sublime Text is still around actually. It is a essentially a very lightweight, glorified version of Notepad. But when I was coding websites for my first business, I made these sort of question banks for medical students to help them get into medical school, BMAT and UCAT Ninja, which required a lot of like front end and back end development using PHP and HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all these fun coding languages that I kind of learned when I was younger, but honed my skills in throughout medical school. I was using Sublime Text as my lightweight text editor of choice. And those apps that I made, those websites that I built ended up kind of making me decent chunks of money while I was at university and ended up meaning that I didn't really have to worry about money at university because this business that I made to help people get into med school was generating enough income. And there were few enough people at the time, I think it's much more crowded now, but at the time there were few enough people doing this and doing it well that my skills in web design and web development really helped our business stand out from the crowd. And so I really owe a lot to kind of being in the right place at the right time and having the right skills, again, knowing how to code, knowing how to make websites, which is still stupidly useful to this day. But Sublime Text was really the app that brought it all together. Next on the list, we have the Laravel PHP framework. This is a bit technical. It's not technically an app, but it sort of is an app. Again, it depends on your definition of app. I'd been kind of dabbling with PHP, which is a coding language since I think the age of about 14, but I was using very much vanilla PHP, just like the absolute bare bones, basic essentials and doing a lot of like really, really, really bad coding in the grand scheme of things. But then when I was in my second year of university, I discovered the Laravel PHP framework and a website called LaraCasts, where a chap called Jeffrey Way, who's a developer, would teach tutorials on how to use Laravel and how to program in PHP properly. And I would watch those tutorials while I would be having my lunch when I was at university. And through osmosis, I just learned so much about web development in PHP. And then I used this Laravel framework to develop these two websites, BMAT and UCAT Ninja, which ended up making decent chunks of money. So thank you Laravel PHP framework for being sick. And it's still really good. It's still very much actively in development. So if you're interested in learning to code, if you're interested in using PHP potentially, then I, can, I can't recommend the Laravel framework highly enough. And associated with that, we have app number 11, which is in fact Stripe. Now, back in the day, I can't remember how long, uh, how long ago this was, but back in the day, it was actually surprisingly hard to accept payments on the internet. These days, it's super easy, thanks mostly to Stripe, which is a company that just made it super, super easy for developers to accept payments on the internet. And so using Stripe made it super easy to collect payments for our courses, but also to collect payments for this BMAT and UCAT question bank that I built. And before that, you had to like hack around with PayPal. PayPal's a total nightmare, but Stripe and learning how to use Stripe and learning how to use Stripe Checkout and the other features associated with Stripe. Again, just helped our business become profitable basically from day one. So thank you Stripe for that. And again, Stripe is still used by loads of people around the world to essentially accept payments. So if you're again, learning to code, if you're a coder, if you're a developer, you've almost certainly heard of Stripe because it's absolutely huge, but that was an app that really shaped, I guess, <laughs> the course of my business and therefore the course of my life. All right, next we have app number 12, which is in fact Google Drive. I started putting everything on Google Drive, I think from my first year of university onwards because I had a hard drive failure and lost everything before that point and I decided never again. And Google Drive was the one that made the most sense because I was using Gmail, I was using my Google account for everything. I didn't have an iPhone at the time and iCloud Drive hadn't, did not exist at the time. But basically since 2012, I've had my entire life on Google Drive. And one of the main ways in which this, I guess, shaped my life was the fact that I made this sort of shared Google Drive for all the medical students in my college. And we would all share essay plans together and share revision notes and stuff. And through having this shared Google Drive, it made all of our studying way more effective and more efficient and streamlined all of our collective processes of getting through medical school because we were all sharing notes and resources. It's a thing that I encourage every other student to do as well. I think it's very easy for students to feel competitive, like they're competing with the other students in their class. But I found that the more collaborative if you are as a student, the more easy life becomes and uh, Google Drive and other things like Dropbox and stuff, but Google Drive, I mean, everyone has a Google account. Uh, Google Drive just made, made it super easy to share notes with, with friends. Then we fast forward a couple of years to 2016 and 2016 is when I first started listening to podcasts. And I think the first podcast I started listening to was the Tim Ferriss Show back in 2016. And that was using an app called Overcast and then later on an app called Castro. So I'm gonna lump those in one. Basically podcast listening apps, again, shaped the course of my life because over the, over the next five years, I consumed probably over a thousand podcast episodes of 
different podcasts. And through listening to podcasts, I got introduced to so many new ideas, so many new thinkers and authors and entrepreneurs and creators. And listening to podcasts, of other people starting YouTube channels made me feel that, oh, starting a YouTube channel feels reasonable. I used to listen to a bunch of podcasts, the Indie Hackers podcast in particular, because it was interviews with developers and coders and people who built profitable businesses from their bedrooms. And so listening to the stories in there was super inspiring. And again, really helped shape the way that I built websites and stuff while I was at university. I've got a video up there, 12 podcasts that changed my life, something like that, classic title. Uh, but you can check that out if you wanna get more specific podcast recommendations. And then we have app number 14, which is Ghost. Now Ghost, is a website hosting platform. Kind of like WordPress, but better, more simpler. Uh, WordPress, again, that sort of became super bloated over time and it's still very bloated. Like I said, it powers like 30% of the internet, if not more. So it kind of has to be the every the everything tool. It has to be able to do everything. Whereas Ghost was specifically a blogging platform, blogging software. So when I first started my website and took my website seriously in 2016, I built it on Ghost. And to this day, six years later, the website still runs on Ghost. Ghost is sick. And it was really through starting my website and starting to write articles on the internet that I first got over that initial fear, that initial hurdle of putting myself out there. And a year later, year and a half later, that's what ultimately formed into this YouTube channel. So if you're looking to start a website, start a blog, Ghost is actually a very reasonable way of doing it. I'll put a video up there, my ultimate guide to starting a website. But you can start on Ghost, it's free. I think, I think it's free or it's like super cheap. I mean, we pay a lot for it these days because we get so much value out of Ghost, but I think it's a really great way to start learning how to build a website. All right, next we come to app number 15, which is Notability. Now this was around 2017 when I first got an iPad Pro and I decided I was gonna go paperless. And I did a bunch of research into all the different note-taking apps and Notability was the one that I found most useful. And from that point onwards, for my final two years of medical school, I was essentially fully paperless. So I would scan all my textbooks, well, I wouldn't scan them. I would get PDF versions of all my textbooks. I would scan all my lecture notes and I would take handwritten notes in, in lectures and in sessions at the hospital. And so this shaped my life and firstly kind of making it way easier for me to study wherever I was, which because I was kind of going to, to sort of to various hospital placements here and there, it meant I couldn't really be bothered to lug around books. And it meant that I could carry my iPad in the hospital with me wherever I went, which made my studying just a bit more efficient. But it also meant that when I started making videos on this YouTube channel, I made a video called How I Take Notes on My iPad Pro using this app, Notability. And that video was the first video that I had that went completely viral. And so that video also shaped the course of my life. And so I have to kind of ultimately thank Notability for being that keystone that was that was there on my iPad Pro that helped me get through med school, but that also helped my YouTube channel take off. Around the same time, 2017 was when I discovered Audible. I'd been hearing an Audible on the grapevine and on YouTube channels for years at that point, but I was thought, ah, audiobooks, who cares? But then I think it was just enough people recommended Audible to me that I was like, okay, you know what? I might as well give this a try. And I've never once looked back. I listened to probably many hours of Audible every week. It's mostly fiction, to be honest, that I listen to. You guys know Brandon Sanderson, my favorite author of all time. All of his books on Audible are absolutely incredible. I've recently been re-listening to Words of Radiance, which is book two of the Stormlight Archive. In fact, I just finished it yesterday, so I'm gonna be starting the reread of book three, Oathbringer. But yeah, Audible is sick. I'd be listening to Audible audiobooks when I was at the gym and when I was kind of commuting to and from work and to and from placement in medical school. And now as I walk to and from the studio, I listen to audiobooks. So yeah, 100% recommend Audible if you haven't I mean, you must have heard of it by now. Everyone talks about Audible. This is not even sponsored by Audible. I just love it so much. And so I'd 100% recommend trying it out if you haven't yet. App number 17 that shaped the course of my life is an app called Sketch. Now Sketch is not actually that popular these days. It's sort of been superseded by apps like Figma and in fact, Adobe XD. But Sketch was sort of a really useful tool back in the day for designing websites and being able to sort of quickly mock up websites and then kind of transfer that into CSS code and, and stuff. And essentially using Sketch, I did a whole redesign of all my websites for my business, but I also started doing a bunch of user interface design. And I'd be using a combination of Photoshop and Sketch and putting those together to design kind of screens and uh, interfaces for various medical technology apps. This was around about 2017 when I was in my fifth, sixth year of medical school. Again, this ties nicely into the thing. It's like, it's like 10 years after I first started learning how to design websites, I'm still doing web design and app design. And because of this ability that I had as a medical student to design apps and make them look pretty, so many doors opened up for me in terms of like plastic surgeons that I wanted to become friends with and things that I wanted to get involved with where they were various different doctors and consultants needed a person who had a medical background who also knew how to make websites. So open up a bunch of doors. Again, just speaks to the power of, of learning how to code, learning how to, how to design potentially websites and apps and interfaces. Super useful skill for anyone even today. All right, app number 18, unsurprisingly, is YouTube. Started my YouTube channel in June, 2017. It's completely changed my life. Don't need to talk too much about that. And app number 19 is an app called Podia, which is the service that I used at the time and still use to this day to host my online courses. So I made three online courses, 
about the BMAT, the UCAT and medical school interviews. This was just as I was leaving medical school. I'd been teaching courses for these exams up until that point. And I thought, you know what, let's turn it into an online course because I don't have the time when I'm gonna be working as a doctor. I'm not gonna have the time to be able to physically teach courses on the weekends. So I basically compiled everything I knew using my knowledge of how to make videos and edit videos into these online courses. And those are hosted on Podia. So you can check it out if you want. If you have an online course, you might like to host it on something like Podia. There are a few other alternatives out there. There's Teachable, there's Sam Card, there's Kajabi, there's a few others, but Podia is usually the one that I recommend because it's the one that I first started off with in 2017. Continuing on the journey, we only have about eight apps left. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, app number 20 is in fact Notion. Again, not gonna talk about Notion too much, but Notion essentially shaped my life because it helped me create systems and streamline processes for creating YouTube videos. And people always ask like, how did you make YouTube videos when you were working full time? And how did you do stuff while you were a medical student? The answer to the working full time question is basically just building systems using Notion. So building like content creation systems and like content repurposing systems and IT generation systems. Notion made it super easy to do that. And that meant that I was able to bang out one or two videos every week, even while I was working full time. So I owe a lot of that to Notion. And I even have a Skillshare class that I've released recently about like exactly how I use Notion. That'll be linked down below. If you wanna check it out, you can access it completely for free. Now we're fast forwarding through to about 2019 when the next app, app number 21, one that changed my life or that shaped my life is in fact Twitter. Yes, I had not taken Twitter seriously up until 2019, until after repeated episodes of our podcast, Not Overthinking, my brother badgered me into taking Twitter seriously. And then in 2019, in sort of late 2019 was when I started actually being active on Twitter. Now we've grown to over 200,000 followers on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter if you aren't already. But at the time I only had like a few hundred or a few thousand followers just by default because people just found me through the YouTube channel. But I started making friends with people like Thomas Frank and Sarah Dietschy and other YouTubers who I had been watching and admiring for some time. And it was really through Twitter that I made friends with these guys and girls. And I still say to all the students of my part-time YouTuber Academy that Twitter is the single best platform to make friends if you are a creator, because every other creator also seems to be on Twitter. A lot of the friends I now have are friends that I, that I originally made through one of us DMing the other on Twitter and being like, hey, we have a mutual respect and appreciation of each other's work, let's be friends. And I've met like in the last six months, a bunch of people in real life as kind of borders have opened up post lockdown that I've initially met through Twitter. And secondly, Twitter's really helped shape my life because if you follow the right people on Twitter, it, it just gives you a stream of really interesting, thoughtful stuff that you can read or watch or listen to. So to be honest, most of the recommendations that I get for books or blog posts or podcasts or documentaries or anything like that, I get from Twitter. And so it's, it's really helped shape my life in that sense as well. So I guess moral of the story is if you are not yet on Twitter and you still view Twitter as being a stupid pointless platform to just complain about the news, then it's because you're not following the right people. If you follow the right people, and if you want to know how you can look at my profile and see who I follow. And if you vibe with any of those guys, you can follow them as well. But if you follow the right people, Twitter becomes a fantastic source of anything like content or blog posts or articles or papers or about literally anything that you're interested in. It's just a fantastic resource all around. App number 22 that shaped my life is Transistor. Transistor is how we host my podcast times two. Firstly, I have Not Overthinking, which is a podcast that I've been doing with my brother every week-ish for about three and a half years now. Damn, it's been three and a half years. We started it in 2019 and that's hosted on Transistor. Similarly, my podcast Deep Dive with Ali Abdal is also hosted on Transistor. I'm again, Twitter friends with the guys who create, created Transistor. They're really good. It's a fantastic app. If you want to start a podcast, I'll put a link down below if you want to check it out. And then app number 23 that shaped my life is in fact Skillshare. Yes, I started making classes on Skillshare in late 2019. And now I'm fairly open about this. Uh, Skillshare classes make us about 50 to $80,000 a month. Thanks to the fact that I've put about 12, 13 classes on Skillshare. And every time people watch them, which they can watch for free with a Skillshare free trial, then we get paid like a few cents for every minute that someone watches the course. And with enough courses and with enough people watching these courses and hopefully getting value from them, that turns into a stupidly lucrative line of revenue for the business. And it was really the thing that took, I think we were at about 10K a month in revenue. And then when Skillshare started to take off, it just jumped up to about 70K a month in revenue, almost like within, within the period of a few months. So I owe a lot to Skillshare and I still continue to make classes on Skillshare every few months because it's fun and it's free for people to access because you can just sign up to a free trial. So I'll put links down below if you want to check that out. App number 24 is Slack. Slack is our team communication platform. You're probably familiar with it. As soon as we started working with a team and hiring people and stuff, Slack just became the central source of all of our communication. And so I spend a lot of time on Slack and on Zoom these days. App number 25 is Frame.io, which is in fact owned by Adobe. Frame is essentially a tool that you can use to help outsource video editing. So again, in late 2019, when I first outsourced the editing of videos for this channel, Frame would be where 
the editors would upload the videos and I'd be able to leave comments, which was awesome because being able to outsource editing freed up loads of my own time. Uh, if you want to learn more about outsourcing editing, you can sign up to my completely free five-day creatorpreneur crash course. It's like a five-day email thing. It'll be linked down below if you want to check it out, but that gives you some information on how to outsource editing if you're a creator. App number 26 is again is a little bit niche and that is ConvertKit. ConvertKit is an email marketing and automation platform that we switched to, I think about a year ago, and a bunch of the revenue that flows through the business is ultimately through ConvertKit and through the power of our email list. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that too much, but if you wanna learn more about the email side of the equation, you can check out my video up there, which is about how to start an email newsletter that could potentially change your life. And finally, app number 27, a little bit niche as well, is called Scrivener. Scrivener is an app that is designed for writers. It basically is software that lets you write a book in the software and split it up into paragraphs and like contents. And it basically helps you structure things, structure writing in a way that really helps with book writing. I've tried Google Docs, I've tried Pages, I've tried Word. None of them are just nearly as nice and distraction free as Scrivener is for writing a manuscript for a book. So again, it's kind of a bit, a bit niche. It's not really relevant to most people, but if you're interested in writing a book, <laughs> I'd 100% recommend Scrivener. If you're interested in keeping up to date with my book writing journey, you can sign up to my book journey newsletter. It's completely free. Every other week I send an email just updating you about what's going on in the book and sharing some interesting papers and resources and videos that I've seen in my process of doing book research that will be linked down below. Do remember to sign up to Adobe Creative Cloud if you got to this point in the video and you fancy supporting the channel and also leveling up your kind of passion projects or your hobbies or your academic stuff. And if you've gotten to this point in the video and you like long and rambly videos like this one, you might like to check out this video over here, which is 28 life lessons that I've learned in 28 years in approximately 28 minutes. So that's a nice little long, long 28 minute video for you to watch if you would like. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye-bye. Roll in. Hey friends, and welcome back to Tech Club, the ongoing series where I talk about something, 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 something. This episode is... <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Thank you so much for the tea, always right, kind. Right. Okay. Do we have that pink mug? We're gonna tackle them in chronological order. And we're gonna tackle them in chronological order. I need, I need, I need, a, th I need a thing in my hand. Is there anything left in the Diet Coke can? <laughs> yes, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Nah. Nah, it's fine. Banter. It's continuity. Continuity errors are funny in YouTube videos. <laughs> we should have a blooper section in this video. <laughs>